Okay, I gotta be honest with you. I have never worn a bow tie in my life before. And apparently bow ties come in a couple different kinds. One is a sort of clippy one that's kind of easy, and one is a not clippy one, which is kind of hard. So I've just spent the last hour looking at YouTube videos about how to do a bow tie. I am not saying that this bow tie is stellar or even elegant, but it is my first bow tie, so props to me. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about some finer points of the syllabus and the schedule. Um, I trust you to read the syllabus very, very carefully. Most of it is, is administrative in nature, but uh, there are some things I want to stress on that. And I want to look at the schedule to just teach you how to read it appropriately, because you'll be going to that, I think, even more on a daily basis. So I'm going to flip it a little bit, and I'm going to start with uh, how to read the schedule. This is a file that's called 390 Schedule. You can see it in my courses by clicking on Content. And then it's in the From Robert Logistics Assignment Craft Lecture section. It should be right up top here, 390 Schedule. So you should have that available to you. I'm going to look at the uh, Word document itself rather than clicking on that. Here it is. OK. Let's move quickly. Uh, the top part just has basic information. You'll notice that my office hours are going to be online only. Uh, we've got our synchronous Friday afternoons scheduled, which is partially office hours. But really, you can contact me whenever you want and set up a time. What I ask is that you give me three good times uh, so I can work my schedule around it and so that we're not going back and forth trying to figure things out. But um, I love to talk about writing, reading, life, whatever. What you're going to see on the home page is just uh, some basic key stuff. If this document changes, I will uh, include information on the change log right here and what the changes are, so you can always see the changes. Here's the key to what we're about to see. Uh, GWW is the textbook, Gotham Writers. Uh, you can look at anything marked further, which I've said before is optional but highly recommended, often handouts that I've developed after talking to students for a number of years. And I'm going to try, in fact, not try, I'm going to uh, try to indicate trigger warnings and content warnings. I don't have those up quite yet, but I will very soon. So you will see those with underlined titles. So how to read this document, it's a complete to-do list for the semester. And anything that is due on a day is due at 3.30 that day. Not that you're supposed to start it at 3.30 that day. That 3.30 on a Monday or a Friday is the end point. Um, again, if anything changes, I'll mark it here. I'll also mark it on the announcements section of my courses. All right, so we're not going to go through this week by week. There's no point. Uh, you can see where things are going. There's going to be three major milestones, a story at about week seven, a rough draft of your final story, which will be about week 11, and then you'll really be doing a lot of revisions and expansions on that. So really, we're just talking about two stories. What I'm prioritizing this year is that you write everything really, really well. I don't need you writing 100 pages if it's all in super drafty form. So we're going to really get everything to be super great. That's my goal. What we'll do right now is just look at one particular day. This is the first day of class, August 19th. Week one gives you a little bit of a heads up to what we're doing. Now, everything that is in this area, you should have completed by August 19th at 3.30 PM. Uh, I've listed everything in order because some things just build off of each other. You are reading this actually, you're right here by now, find points of the syllabus and schedule, but let's pretend you're not. You will have watched the welcome video that will talk a little bit about other things. Then you read the COVID life document, et cetera, et cetera. You'll see that I'm trying to give you a sense of the actions, watch, read, navigate. Um, if there is something that is a, an official deliverable for your grade, it will be listed under write and submit. So for example, you will see that Friday, August 21st, by 3.30, you will have written and submitted your exercise one. Last thing I want to say is that we've got our Friday synchronous office hour slash story sessions. Zoom meeting IDs and URLs are all 
right here. You shouldn't need a password for that, but you do need the URL. So you can see those for any week. And as I've said before, any of these things are also located in my courses in your checklist. So these things in the class schedule and in your checklists should in fact mirror each other. That is it on the schedule. Okay, in part two of this video, I wanna talk a little bit about the syllabus. Now the syllabus has a little bit of information on more the philosophy of the class and, and what kinds of things I'm wanting from you aesthetically. I'm not gonna talk about that right now. Uh, that I'll be talking about more in the what I want from you video later this week. Right now, I just wanna go over any fine points of the logistical part of the syllabus. Again, you can find the syllabus in content, 390 syllabus, you've got your PDF document. I'm gonna go to my document just to make it easier. And I'm just, I expect you to read it carefully. And in fact, for your survey, you will need to read it carefully. But now I'm just pointing out a couple uh, important things. I've already talked about the fact that Zoom appointments for office hours are super great and that I'll have office hours every Friday during our story time sessions. First page has a list of everything in the document, so you should be able to do a find for something up here in your nice search bar. Oh, well, this is Word, but if you have Acrobat, then you'll be able to do that and get to it a little bit more quickly. Course description, I'll just, um, it's not always clear on SIS, but this is a class, um, English 390 can be taught in any genre. This is a class specifically a uh, workshop on literary fiction, which I define a little bit later. Um, we can talk about the sort of borders of fiction and how literary fiction intersects with other genres later on. Here's the tenets of the class. Um, what I'm wanting from you as a writer is uh, a couple of things. One, I want you to be exposed to many different kinds of writing and to incorporate them into what you're doing. One, I want two, ha, huh, I want you to think about how to be really creative and interesting. Now that doesn't mean fanciful. It means preparing us for things that are unexpected. It means taking uh, strange directions or unusual directions that we don't know. The writer John Gardner talks about something that is unexpected but inevitable. That is, it, it, it's within the realm of our possibility and it's been set up in the story, but we're not coming to it. It's what I'm gonna call the third thing. So part of your grade is actually on your ability to think outside the box of um, a yes, no answer. You succeed or you fail. We're not here to write fiction that other people have written or else then we can just copy somebody's fiction. It's to write something that's truly interesting and meaningful. Um, cliche and abstraction are your mortal enemies and I will talk a lot about how we make our abstract writing concrete with details. Uh, language is your Play-Doh. That's going to be one of many Simpsons jokes I'm going to make this year. Uh, but I want you, you know, we think about different kinds of paintings, and you'll see this in the video I write later, that uh, there's lots of different painting styles. We're also going to think about lots of different language styles. Uh, stories are not a place where language is transparent. Language is everything that we, that, that, allows us to be in the world in a certain way, whether it's visual language or written language. I'm asking you to do things differently, do things wrong, experiment, imagine different ways of thinking things, even if it means incomplete sentences or broken things. Lastly, I want you to be uh, intense and inspired with what you're writing. Why should anybody read a short story if there isn't an intensity to it or a feeling that the writer has uh, cares about it deeply. Now that caring doesn't have to be serious. It could be humorous, it could be intellectual, it could be emotional, it could be lots of different things. It could be a character that wants a candy bar, but if they want that candy bar bad enough, then we tap into the deepness of that intensity. So I want you to think about inspiration and intensity. Lastly, and this is a real COVID thing, which is, you know, these are not normal times. How are you going to represent them? Um, I'm going to really encourage you to think about your social lives, your political lives, how things play out in these different times. How do we date um, in COVID lives? How have things changed? That's the fabric by which our personalities come through, the decisions we make. And so I'm really going to ask you to consider um, you know, representing this world in, and how are you going to do it? Objectives are you're going to become a better writer, but that's a lot of different things. Uh, one thing that's really important is I'm not teaching you rules. I'm teaching you 
uh, ways of making sentences that are elegant and beautiful and sometimes ugly and stories that uh, capture our attentions and transform us. But there aren't really rules to it. Yeah, there are things that we can kind of live by and general feelings that there's something that you want to do before you start breaking it. But um, don't rely on me. You know, the success you have in this class is your ability to actually critically think through the stories you want to build. I'm going to skip this part on literary fiction. Uh, there's one required text, Gotham's Writers Writing Fiction. Somewhere I have it here, but I don't know where I put it, so forget that. Uh, it's yellow. Uh, buy it. I've talked about that. This should be fairly straightforward. These are your grades and deliverables. I've actually explained them a little bit later on. So this should give you info on what you're doing and how it will be uploaded. This should be pretty straightforward. And you'll get more specific information on each exercise in your stories as the time goes on. You'll see that you have about five, well, four kinds of deliver deliverables. These are your big deliverables, which are your stories that you're turning in. Uh, there's eight take-home exercises. They're mostly the first half of the semester. There are your Friday responses, and you'll have a document, the Friday responses document, to talk about that. But that allows you to respond briefly to both the chapter in Gotham and the stories we've read. Uh, we have three workshops through the semester, and you will be reviewing the work of your peers and quite extensively, and the ability, um, your success in doing that is 10% of your grade. You can see the grading assignments fiction workshop document on my courses if you want more specific information on these gradings. Uh, there's a little bit of extra credit. If you need it, you can take a look through that. Um, as far as grading goes, the general rule in my classes are that the best thing you can do for your grade is turn stuff in on time. Uh, I don't like giving bad grades for things because I don't want to stifle your creativity. Sometimes you have to do things kind of wrong to get to another point. Sometimes the light bulb doesn't go on right away. So work rate is actually more important. Uh, having said that, I might give you fairly really good grades, but still uh, give you a, you know, a lot of feedback and critique on your work. I want you to become great writers. I just don't want to tie the greatness of your writing to the grade because um, the more important thing is to be creative and to be, again, critically thinking about how you're doing. I want you to be improving, but I don't want you to be afraid to fail. All right, moving through late work policy. You should be able to read through this. Uh, this year, I'm not taking attendance and participation. This is for in-person work only. That means that those in-person sessions are, uh, to some extent, optional. In those in-person sessions, we'll be doing one of three things. We'll either be doing collaborative brainstorming, which helps us improve our creativity by taking in the ideas of others. Uh, we'll be making a lot of stories just by modeling things, by asking questions um, of our characters, which we'll build from scratch. And we might do some writing exercises as well. I find these to be really fun and collaborative and, it, to be honest, really useful because they get us out of our own heads. Sometimes uh, the thing that's unexpected in a story we can't see right away and it's not until somebody else asks a particular question or goes down a particular uh, avenue that we have another realm of creative thinking that opens up. You'll get a lot of feedback from me uh, during the class. The most extensive feedback will be on your stories, which will I'll do all kinds of feedback, uh, critique, editing, and we will have one-on-one -on -one sessions after those to talk about them. I'll give some light feedback on your uh, exercises and some very light feedback on your Friday responses, usually just, here's a great direction, what about this direction, or I'll tell you if it's not really what I'm looking for in terms of engagement and intensity. A uh, couple things, uh, I will give feedback on your rough drafts of your stories if they're turned in in advance. Uh, if you have craft questions, I'll answer those within 48 hours. Uh, clarifications with clarification questions, that's in the discussion form within 24 hours. Uh, about contacting me, um, I want you to be very mindful of contacting me directly, uh, mostly because I'm trying real hard to get all the information in the right place for you. So if you have confusion, check the syllabus, check all the documents, check my courses first. If you can't find it, 
Ask somebody else in the class, maybe they know. If you still can't find it, go to the clarification question discussion area in my courses. If still that isn't helping or it's something that's personal or confidential, then email me. And, um, you know, I don't check my email all the time. It might take me a day to get back to you, but I do check my email. And if you ever want to talk about the writing, something that's going on in class, remember that, you know, our stories will, will tackle some very delicate subjects. Sometimes your colleagues' stories will tackle some delicate subjects. I'm always available to talk. All right, for those of you in the class, ha, huh, shouldn't have let you see that. Sneaky. If it's in the class, unless you're using your phone for something class-related, I'm not particularly, turn your phone off. Um, turn, and unless you're using your laptop to take notes, I try to have it be a tech-free class. That way we can all engage because anything we do in class is going to be real community-based stuff. Uh, if you can, be prepared to talk in class, give constructive feedback, and to brainstorm. The more people that are involved in interesting ways, the more different opinions and ideas we get. Um, but I also want to say, when you're in class, please be aware of who is and who isn't speaking um, so that everybody's voice can be heard, can be respected. Uh, I have zero tolerance for bias or offensive behavior in the class. Uh, but part of that is, is you being aware of what the temperature of the room is. Uh, if you find yourself talking a lot, maybe it's time to let somebody else speak. Maybe uh, changing the conversation in a different way or changing your modality or your tone. And I will do the same. Course content. Um, this is tricky, but you know, a lot of the stories we read will be tackling difficult things, sometimes in direct ways, sometimes in indirect ways. Uh, some things will be triggering. I hope not. I um, don't want people to suffer. And some things will be about you know, very tricky content. I also think that one of the roles of literature is, is a place for us to work things out and to react to them and um, sometimes experience what other people have experienced. Uh, if something is, <coughs> excuse me, if something is something you want to talk about, please, I'm open. I want to talk about things. If you ever feel the need to step out of a class discussion or not participate, you can always do so. All right, almost there. Names and pronouns. Uh, please let me know if you have a specific name, a specific nickname, and your pronouns. You'll do that in the survey you give me in the first week. Um, I would like to be adjusted with he, him pronouns, although, you know, Robert is the best. I know it's a really hard semester, or it's you know a challenging semester. I've put RIT's mental health resources here. Um, Title IX, we talked about this about discrimination. Um, here is the information on Title IX. Again, I expect everybody to treat everybody else as equals and to be compassionate to them at all times. Uh, I don't expect that you are going to be plagiarizing work. I will find out, I always do. Um, that's it. I know this is a lot of information to take in. I know it's stuff that it might not be important for a couple weeks. Really, um, some of the important stuff is that you know you can go back to the syllabus to find this information. All right, that's it for now. Lots of logistic stuff in week one. I will talk to you later.